Hey guys, I'm Jared Falk, and today I'm going to talk about easy drum fills that sound hard. And when I was upstairs actually putting this together, I actually had the idea to do this lesson, and then I also thought we could eventually do the opposite lesson, uh, hard drum fills that sound easy, because I think there's a ton of those, and I'm sure you've encountered them before. So if you want more stuff like this, you have some feedback, just leave your questions in the comments, and we'll get to them later. But now let's kind of talk about some of the stuff that I want to go through here, and this is the kind of stuff that when I was first starting out drumming, I heard my favorite drummers play these types of patterns, and I was just like, that sounds ridiculous. It sounds like there's 18 people up there to get that sound. And uh, you know, when I took lessons with my teachers and they finally kind of broke it down for me, I realized it's not that hard. And so you need the sheet music for this, so go ahead and download the sheet music or, or look at the, the PDF, and basically, Exercise one is going to be our starting point for how we're going to actually develop this and learn this. Okay, so what do we have there? We have just a straight eighth note groove, and then that goes into a fill, and the fill is only going to use our right hand on eighth notes. So basically, you play the eighth note beat, one and two and three and four and, and then just move your right hand down to the snare, one and two and three and four and. Okay, so this is our starting point, okay? I know this doesn't sound hard yet, and it probably sounds easy and stupid, but we're going to get to the stuff that actually sounds hard, okay? So let's play this at 60 and then 100 beats per minute to show you guys how it sounds slow and fast. Okay, so that's an easy drum fill that sounds easy, and I promise we're going to get to the stuff that sounds hard, which is kind of the next one. And you see the sticking written above the actual pattern, and those, that pattern is written as 16th note triplets, which basically means six notes per quarter note. So you count one, two, three, four, there's six notes for every one of those counts. And the right hand is going to stay exactly the same. Okay, so we're going to go right, 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 right. And then in between each of those rights, we're going to insert two left note strokes. So it's going to sound like this. Don't worry about how it's counted yet. See what the right hand is doing? So the left hand is just inserting a quick double. And the way that 16th note triplets are counted, if you do want to count these, is one tita and tita, two tita and tita, three tita and tita, four tita and tita. Or you could count it one triplet and triplet, two triplet and triplet, three triplet and triplet, four triplet and triplet. But because you kind of have this right hand as your guide, you don't even really need to count. You could just count like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Okay, and so the next step there, and I know this is a question you guys are all going to ask, is what are you doing for the doubles in the left hand? Because I know some people struggle with getting two quick notes, and you always wonder, are you bouncing? Are you using fingers? Are you using wrists? And I will say it is a combination of kind of everything, okay? So make sure that you have a correct grip on the sticks, and when I'm playing this type of thing on the snare drum, um, it's more bounce than wrists. So that would look something like this. So it's more bounce than wrist, but it is a combination of both, okay? Every time I drop the stick, I try and receive the rebound and then just push it down again for the next stroke. Now, if I'm doing something on the floor tom, where there's not nearly as much rebound, I have to use more wrist and use more fingers to kind of pull the stick back down. So that would look something like this. So 
So the starting point after you just learn the straight eights and the right is just kind of practicing that around the drums. Okay, so don't even move on to number two. Don't even worry about time until you kind of figure out this next step. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play right, left, left around the entire drum set and you'll see how it sounds. Now what I want to do is I want to show you what exercise 2 looks like, played at 60 and then again at 100. Here we go. So now we've completed the second exercise and the last three exercises are basically just variations on what you can do with this. Now you saw when I was just goofing around before this, you can play this pattern anywhere over the entire drum set. Is that If that right hand stays constant, doing eighth notes, and your left hand just inserts the two quick doubles in between, it's going to be in time and you're going to be able to land on the one of the next bar or you could do a two bar fill or a three bar fill or four bar fill and I've seen drummers base entire solos off of this pattern. Okay, so now I'm going to go through exercise three for you which is basically just moving the right hand down the drum. So it goes right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left and then again right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left. Here we go, slow and fast. In the fourth variation, we're going to be actually going in groups of three down the drum. So three in the snare, three in the high tom, three in the mid tom, three in the low tom. Then we go three on the low tom, three on the mid tom, three on the high tom, three on the snare, and end the groove. And this is something that's really hard to do with straight singles because of the way the hands are going to want to overlap. If you go right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, and then left, right, left. Right, and then it has to go right, left, right, if you were to do singles. We're not going to worry about that. It's simple because we're playing a three note pattern with our hands and our sticking. Right, left, left, 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 right, left, left. Okay, and just easily kind of flows up and down the drum set really, really nicely. So I'm going to play this for you guys slow and fast.
So I'm going to show you guys the last exercise, and this is a fun one just because um, the way it kind of goes down the drums and then actually goes to the crashes. And some of you guys like um, different song enders, different flashy fills to do, like at the end of a song when everyone's kind of going nuts, and this works really, really well for that. Um, so I'm going to play for you guys slow and fast, but basically it's just right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, and then I go on the crashes with the bass drum. Crash, left, left, crash, left, left, crash, left, left, crash, left, left, crash, and back out. And so you can choose to kind of extend that part, which would sound something like this. I'll just play it for you quickly. So that on its own sounds really hard to do, but I think it's really, really easy. So I'll play this one for you guys at 60 beats per minute and 100 beats per minute. Here we go. So that's a variation on a really easy drum fill that I think sounds really, really challenging. So I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. Please leave me your comments and maybe we can do one on hard drum fills that sound easy in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys again soon.